Hello friends, my name is Money Ness and today I've invited a bunch of friends to talk to you about our favorite books of 2019. Hi, my name is Taylor and you can find me at youtube.com slash it's radish time or on Twitter at it's radish time. My favorite book that I read in 2019 was Homecoming by Ya Gyasi. So I liked it because it's kind of like a historical fiction, I guess, that traces the the lines of these two sisters who were separated. One um, stays in Africa and the other is kidnapped and sold um, into slavery in the Americas and it follows kind of their generations up to present day. It really beautifully illustrates how this legacy, this history affects people over decades and decades and decades and centuries and that what happened so long ago can still be part of your story today and it kind of fills in that history that I don't have. Hello everybody, it's Kara from Wild Book Garden and my favorite book of 2019 is Lovely War by Julie Berry. One of the things I love most about this book is the balance of all of the different story elements. We have the mythological component, we have the historical uh, World War One centered component, and we also have the fact that Julie Berry is drawing on her own characters that she has put into these real situations and worlds. I really love mythology, so the fact that this is a mythology-centered retelling is something that really appeals to me, but I think even if you don't, or even if you don't like World War One stories or like these other aspects of the book, I think the way they're all blended together and they're balanced with fantastic character work and beautiful writing, I think all of those things are brought together in a way that if you are interested in these things you're gonna love this book, but even if you're not I think this could really work for you. It's lovely and descriptive and very smooth feeling to read without overpowering other parts of the story, especially the character growth and the character development, um, because that's one of the things I sometimes feel with beautiful writing styles is it can sound so pretty that it almost doesn't feel like real people are talking or existing in this world, and that never happened with this one. She also, I think, did a great job with the realism of the historical aspects. Um, one of the forming characters, Aubrey, is a black infantryman, and the book is very upfront about the horrible racism and discrimination he faces and that is a real part of the book. It's given the due that it deserves without it feeling like it completely overshadows everything about his character. Like he doesn't only exist to be a black character suffering racism. He has allowed his own character arc and his own part of the story and I just thought that was really really well done. This is a book about why individual people matter, why emotional connections between people are not a sign of weakness or they're not something to be overlooked. And I don't think this book ever feels like it's hitting you over the head. Like this isn't like a message book, um, but the general feeling you get about this being a story that doesn't look down on people for caring about each other, that caring about people and doing small good things in the world is important and it makes a difference. And that's just one of the things I love about The Lovely War. Hi, I'm Linda and you can find me on YouTube Instagram and Twitter under A Crimson Daisy. My favorite book of the year is Like a Love Story by Abdin Zimian. I adored this book. This book is not only one of my favorite books of the year, uh, it's also become one of my favorite books of all time. It's a beautiful historical yet YA fiction novel um, dealing with the AIDS crisis and a young Iranian-American boy struggling to define his identity in a time where um, people of his sexuality have been so demonized and are dying and it's just so gorgeous and heartbreaking and inspiring and touched me um, very deeply. It's amazing. Hi friends, my name is Sajid and I am from the channel Books on My Social Life. For my favorite book of 2019, I had quite a few contenders, so this was a really difficult choice for me, but I ultimately ended up having to go with the book that was not only the most engaging story, but the book that I felt the deepest emotional connection to, and the book that I saw myself in the most. And without any shadow of a doubt, that book was The Love and Lies of Roxana Ali by Sabina Khan. This is about a queer Muslim girl dealing with homophobia in her family and community. It's a really dark book. I, you know, wouldn't recommend that everybody just pick this one up on the go. You have to be, you, know, you have to be strong enough to handle it because it is a very difficult story to digest. But 
when you do read it and if you can read it it is so engaging it is so enthralling it is incredibly plot driven but not in a way that sacrifices character development it's just such a good story and it's so underrated which gets me so angry because i think that a lot of people would enjoy it if they pick it up but it's also an incredibly important story because it's a story about a queer muslim girl which we don't see enough of queer muslims are repressed and silenced both within and outside of the muslim community and the more space and the more opportunities that we have to tell our stories the more we can and empower queer Muslims in our communities and this book being the first ever book that I've ever read that features a queer Muslim main protagonist was so incredibly monumental for me so I really really wish that more people would read it so please put it on your TBR for 2020. Hi everyone my name is Njeri and you can find me over at Onyx Pages. My favorite book of 2019 was Two Moons Stories written by Crystal A. Smith. This debut collection of short stories follows a number of uh, black lesbian characters falling in love, falling out of love, falling into love with themselves in speculative and I would say science fiction-y kinds of settings. It was beautiful, it made me cry, it validated me, it was funny, and it packed a lot of punch for such a small book. So I would definitely recommend this to you. I'm Alexa Dunn. You can find me at my YouTube channel, Alexa Dunn, where I post videos about writing, traditional publishing, and books. My favorite book of 2019 was The Bone Houses by Emily Lloyd Jones. This is a YA fantasy that just was a very comforting read. It has a whimsical, almost folksy fairy tale quality, which I really, really enjoyed. It also features a heroine and a hero who play a little bit against type. The heroine is very kind of hard and stubborn and a bit of a fighter. But then in contrast to her, the hero is kind of soft and thoughtful and very vulnerable. And one of the things about this book that I thought was really refreshing is that the male character is dealing with chronic pain. So it's a depiction of chronic pain in YA fantasy that I just really haven't seen. And most importantly, it just exists in the narrative, there's no quest to fix anything, there's no magical solution. So that was really refreshing. But honestly, the big thing for me is that this book made me feel things. I was on a journey with these characters, I really cared about them, and there were multiple points of the book where I cried, which is really, really big for me. It's a book that just it was sweeping and it took me places and it made me feel things. And that is why The Bone Houses by Emily Lloyd Jones is my favorite book of 2019. Hi, my name is Ashley. My YouTube channel name is Don't Have a Degree in Reading. You can also find me on Twitter under No Reading Degree. My favorite book of 2019 would definitely, hands down, go to The Heart Forger by Ren Chepeco. This is actually the second book in the Bone Witch trilogy. The main character very much reminds me of a mixture of Anakin Skywalker and Daenerys Targaryen from Game of Thrones. There's a lot of light in them. There's a lot of good intentions, but there's also a lot of darkness in them, which leads to questionable decision-making and a lot of heartbreaking and trauma along with that. And there's also a budding of romance that just, you know, a little steamy in some places and this is an Asian inspired world. The author is a woman of color. There's also a trans character represented and um, throughout the series they actually are going through a transition. There's a very natural progression of the switching of their pronouns. 10 out of 10 would recommend giving the Bone Witch trilogy a try if it sounds interesting to you. I'm going with Gods of Jade and Shadow by Sylvia Moreno Garcia. This is a beautiful fantasy book that I just really enjoyed for having this sort of like easy steady pace. It wasn't quite the speedy fantasy adventure nor was it quite the slow character study that you might expect from a fantasy that is fairy tale inspired. It just was really thoughtful and methodical about the journey that it took you on and all of the ways that it informed our main character's arc and her coming of age. Moreno Garcia's writing is just so lovely. She's really good about invoking the senses and the first 
first book that I read of hers, Signal to Noise, it was all about music and in Gods of Jade and Shadow it was really much about color. There was something very bright and vivid and lush about her descriptions and about the world that she described, not only in the Mayan folklore and in the Mayan inspired fantasy, but also in the Jazz Age. The historical and fantastical elements of this story were both very well done and at the end it was a death in the maiden story, it was angsty, and it had a bittersweet end that I just truly enjoyed. Hi guys, I'm Bethany and you can find me at Beautifully Bookish Bethany on YouTube and Instagram and at bookish underscore Bethany on Twitter. My favorite book of 2019 was absolutely The Starless Sea by Erin Morgenstern. This one surprised me with how much I loved it because Night Circus didn't work as well for me, but this was kind of my perfect book. It's slow paced, it's very character driven, it has lots of mythology and different pieces that fit together, all of which I love. It is diverse, it has rich thematic content, it's a love letter to storytelling, and parts of it are inspired by RPG video games like Dragon Age, um, which made me so happy, I can't even tell you. Before I was even done reading this book, I knew I was gonna wanna reread it again. It's an all-time favorite for me and I didn't have that high of expectations going into it. Lyrical writing, beautiful prose, um, yeah, I'm definitely in love with this one. Hi everyone, this is Rachel with the Shades of Orange YouTube channel. I read a combination of horror as well as adult science fiction and fantasy. And my favorite book of 2019, without a doubt, was Under the Skin by Michelle Faber. This is a really unique piece of literary speculative fiction that blends together some of my favorite genres. And I liked it so much because it was so different than anything else I've ever read. It's also very weird and I'm learning that I like my books a little bit weird. This book had amazing writing. I definitely want to read more by this author because his writing was visceral and interesting and just very taut in a way that I really like. This book probably won't be for everyone but it certainly was for me. I should mention that there is some body horror in this book which does come up in some of my favorite books but if that sounds up your alley I highly recommend it. It is weird and wonderful and it's definitely one I'm going to reread because it just made me question a lot of my moral beliefs which is not something I would expect from a book like this but it's complex and interesting and just left me thinking about it for a really long time which is always high praise. Hi I'm Caitlin Vanoss. Normally you can find me on the internet on Twitter under my full name at Caitlin Vanoss. I also am hoping to start posting booktube videos again at Book Chats. My favorite book that I read in 2019 was Abby Drake Starts Over by Linda Holmes. This is a really hard decision. I read a lot of amazing five-star books this year, but this one, five-star books are always books that kind of speak to me personally, not just are like high quality and etc. And this one really was a book of my heart. Um, I'm a little biased because Linda Holmes used to live in Minnesota and I live in Minnesota as evidenced by this snow, uh, which I deeply love. And so Evie, who is named after Eveleth, Minnesota, um, at points in this book is called Minnesota by the love interest, even though she has nothing to do with Minnesota personally. And that just like speaks to my heart. But what I really loved about this book is that it was a book that had personal growth for both characters, that had romance for both characters, uh, both of the primary characters, but it also acknowledged that they did not need each other to function, that they were choosing to pursue a relationship because they thought it would be good, but that they could have good lives outside of that. And this sounds very weird to be like, that's why I loved it, but I did. I really did. And so this is the book that I wish I had seen more of booktube talk about and more people I know had read. I've been trying to force my friends that I see more regularly to read it. Um, but Abby Drake starts over by Linda Holmes. Oh, hello. My name is Mara from the channel Books Like Woe, and you can also find me on Instagram, Goodreads, Twitter, at Books Like Woe. My favorite 2019 release was definitely No Visible Bruises, What We Don't Know About Domestic Violence Can Kill Us by Rachel Louise Snyder. I think from the title, you can probably gather that there are some trigger warnings needed here in terms of violence and sexual assault, etc. But this is a nonfiction account basically about the state of domestic violence intimate partner abuse, etc. cetera, uh, in the US. And this is a really interesting nonfiction uh, book in terms of its genre. So it reads somewhat like true crime, but then also it has a lot of sort of like normal, what you would expect as sort of like reportage uh, from a, a journalist, um, you know, some sociological insights, etc. And I think what really makes this book special is that 
it has a lot of empathy for all of the people involved in this cycle. And it really looks at this issue systemically for both the men and women involved. Um, you know, of course, there's also same sex violence and intimate partner relationships. But basically, uh, kind of the posture of this book is that the vast majority of this abuse is happening from men to women. And I think that she does a good job of really getting into the mindset. You know, there's the cliche of like, why do why do you stay or whatever. And I think she really interrogates that question very seriously for the people who are the victims of the abuse, but then also really um, explores what is it that the people perpetrating the abuse are getting out of this cycle because it's toxic for everyone. So anyway, a very heavy book, but incredibly important. I think something I would highly recommend that if you can read it, that you do read it. Hi, my name is Rachel Hobson. I'm from a channel called The Boston Book Bitty, and today I'm here to talk about my favorite book of the year, and that is Shrill Notes from a Loud Woman by Lindy West. Lindy West talks about her coming of age in an industry that focuses its value on thin, conventionally pretty women. And Lindy West is a plus size person, so of course she doesn't fit into that mold. And being a person on the internet, she's a target because she's not that person that fits into the socially acceptable mold. So she talks a lot about these hard hitting topics while also like talking about it in a humorous way. She will say something that really hits like close to home for me and then she will like tell a joke about it. And in a way that really tied into everything. I found her to be incredibly funny and honestly, it's hard for me to laugh at a book or laugh out loud while I'm reading a book. And she does it effortlessly. I also listened to this as an audiobook where she narrates it. And I think that really like heightened the experience for me. So five out of five. If you have not read it, I highly recommend it. Thank you to everybody who participated. This is coming a little bit later after our least favorites because I got sick. But I'm feeling better. The video is out. And as always, I'm super grateful for everybody who spent the time talking to us about their favorites. I will, of course, leave all of the information about the books mentioned and the creators who participated in the description below. Thank you so much for watching this video, and I will see you guys soon. Uh, was I supposed to tell you what it's about? <laughs> Meh. Look it up. <laughs>